Over the past six months, we have been traveling across the length and the width of Karnataka in India. In the last six months, having covered more than 10,000 kilometers and having visited more than 150 temples, ancient temples in Karnataka, we came across some very unusual artifacts which we normally did not find in the northern part of India. These items are the hero stones which are normally found near the ancient temples or even in the fields, cities, everywhere. Hero stones are erected for commemoration with basic concept to raise in memory or honor of the dead who lost their lives in a violent contest. However, hero stones do not form part of the actual practice of the disposal of the dead. These upright slabs of stones, which are mostly free standing, have horizontal bands of sculptures on their surface. These stones are known in various terms such as Viragal, Nattukal, Madukal, Paliyal, Govardhana Stamba, Kirti Stamba, Chaya Stamba. Etc. They are found distributed across India and more particularly in the southern part of India. Most of them represent land fights in which relief of horses and elephant camels were depicted along with the hero. The practice of erecting hero stones in India is very old. The Vedic texts refer to the erection of a monument for the memory of the dead person. The practice of erection of tumulus or mound with an attached post is referred in the Satpata Brahmana. Further, the Satpata Brahmana of the 9th or the 9th century BC describes in detail how to select the site, the direction, the location and the procedure of erection of the monument. These are related to funeral these are related to funeral practices. During the days of King Ashoka in the 3rd century BC, hero stones were erected on wooden posts and subsequently stone was used as a more durable material which replaced wood. The memorial stones contain funeral remains whereas hero stones are only related to the death of a person who died in a battle, war or similar kind of activities without any funeral remains. The bands of sculptures on the hero stones not only provide artistic attainment but also the social and cultural history of the region of that particular period. The folklore and ballads of India is full of heroic acts. Hero stones are known in different terms in different parts of India and have been reported from Gujarat, Maharashtra, Goa, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan, Himachal Pradesh and Central India. We were amazed by the number of hero stones which we found in Karnataka, that too particularly in the southern part of Karnataka. These hero stones range from the Chalukyan period, Vaisalas, Kadambas of Halsi, Kadambas of Banwasi and Baligave. The maximum number of hero stones were found by us in the small village called Baligave, which is in the Shikaripura Taluka of the Shiv Moga district of Karnataka. Here is a detailed video of the various hero stones found by us over a period of time and we have tried to link and try to get some data related to the hero stones. It was very difficult to get the details of the hero stones as the language in the hero stone is normally Old Kannada, also known as Hale Kannada. However, we tried to contact many offices of the Archaeological Survey of India in Karnataka. However, at most of these offices, the details of the hero stones was not available. One of our historian friends asked us to go through an old book written by Benjamin Lewis Rice who lived in India between 1837 to 1927. The detailed book written by him called the Epigraphia Karnataka has a details of more than 9000 inscriptions and this book was written in 1873. This book is also available at archive.org for those people who are interested in epigraphy and the history of the ancient stones. This book details the various copper plates called Tamarpatra as well as the hero stones and the inscriptions called the Shila Shashana. The hero stones have been found from the Kadamba period that is 450 AD to 1138 AD, the Ganga period 700 to 1009 AD, the Chalukyan period, the Hoysala period from 1068 to 1345 AD and even the Vijayanagara Empire that is from 1344 to 1667 AD. There was a major work done on the hero stones by the then historians Dr. Fleet as well as Robert Sewell and the first person to photograph majority of these inscriptions and the hero stones was one Major Dixon who in 1873 <coughs> catalogued the various hero stones found in the state of Karnataka. So here our journey begins. Let us try to dive deep in the history and the geography of the hero stone. I hope you will enjoy this presentation.
Thank you. The practice of setting up of hero stones to commemorate warriors who had died in a battle is one that was probably connected to the funeral practices of the megalithic period. Megalithic burials in earthenware jars or manhurs, stone circles, dolmens, etc. and are found in a larger part of South India. These practices are often mentioned in the poems of the Sangama anthologies. The Tolka PM mentions the setting up of hero stones as a poetic theme and also describes it as a ceremony which involved the search for the appropriate stone, fixing an auspicious time, the ceremonial bathing and setting up of the stone, celebration of the stone during the festivals, praise and worship of the stone. The poems repeatedly mention the writings of the name of the warrior while detailed epigraphs might not have existed in the spirit the name of the hero might have been inscribed and perhaps some representation of the heroic episode because of which he met his death cattle raids are mentioned in one instance as the incident leading to the death of a warrior and this continued in the early medieval period as well as later on became a frequent occurrence the continuity between the practices of the megalithic period and that of the later historical period can be seen in the fact that many of the hero stones were in the form of dolmens with three upright stones and a capstone with the inscription and the figure of the hero on the rear stone facing the entrance the sangam period was marked with proto state chiefdoms however the regular class divided state in the early medieval period still had the presence of multiple political structures the continual struggles between these led to a state of constant conflict with villages fighting their neighbors and feudal lords at every level to expand their frontiers and gain resources particularly cattle and sometimes men or women every able bodied man had to be available to fight the heroic ethos which marked the puram poetry of the tamil sangam corpus continued to be relevant in the early medieval period as well however there is an objective difference between the bonds between the warrior and the chief in the pre state polity of the sangam age and ties between the lord and the retainer in the early medieval states with their hierarchical societies literary works in kannada from the 10th century onwards clearly express the obligations of servant that is a bhritya to the lord who nourishes him it is said that a bhritya should sacrifice his wealth and life for his master and fight without accepting aid and without fear if he can he should fight to win if not he should put in his best efforts and die fighting such is the duty of the servant if he slips away from the field without doing either his honor would be tarnished the literary works of the 10th century also hold forth on occasions for a warrior to put forth his powers in a cattle raid called trugolol when women cry for help pen bayolol when the king commands iri vesadol in defense of one's kinsmen nenthane dar and when one's village is being destroyed urali vinol if a man does not put forth his valor to the touchstone he is no man but a eunuch in essentials this differs little from the list of occasions that one can glean from the hitoic poetry of the tamil sangama works the hero stones can be categorized into four or five categories the first of the hero stone is a death on a battlefield at the command of the lord while heroes who fell in minor intervillage skirmishes got small bequests those who fought for their superiors received generous grants of land thus the heirs of rachaya ganga who died in an invasion of utrilga kote in course of a battle against the nolambas received the village of illagi and dudigeri as kalnad this would be a hero stone commemorating the ervasa or the command of the lord category of occasion for valor in runners list the next category of hero stones is assault on women pen bayolol or women's cry for help is usually expressed as pandi rudi ukal loosening of the girdle of women in hero stone inscriptions a phrase which is much more expressive of the violence involved we already have cited the kogudu viragal inscription which was a combination of a cattle raid and a destructive raid on, on a village and an assault on mothers similar combinations occur in later records too the udhare hero stone of the 1128 ad of the sorab taluka in the shimoga district records that the siege of ishapur by premadi santara was relieved at the orders of the mahapradana dandanayaka masanaya by his maiduna women were 
frequently carried away by the raiders but apparently not always rescued thus in the talagunda hero stone of 1169 we have a record of a death of kalya nayaka son of sovi setti of mukawa who rescued the cattle of alanur in shantalige which was being carried away by dandanayaka keshimaya hegade of banwase the inscription had in its beginning refer to the woman being assaulted and carried away along with the cattle but there is no reference to the woman being rescued in the sila vantana koppa inscription of the 1180 ad the local rulers had attacked uddhare and carried away uddaya besai and the cattle of the place as in the talgunda's hero stone the cattle were rescued but the woman apparently remained with the ravisher however this is not always the case the kuppatur hero stone of 1177 ad of the sorabuk taluka in the shimoga district specifically mentions that the women have been rescued the next category of hero stones is the sati stones women are brought into the discussion of heroism in the context of sati or widow immolation like other aspects of the discourse on heroism this too is this too is elaborated on by the pampa and the rana in the context of the eve of a battle a warrior is depicted as looking forward to a heroic death and the company of celestial nymphs his wife then resolves to preempt her husband and await him in heaven to prevent the heavenly nymphs from enjoying his company cattle raids and their reverses defenses and recovery of cattle stolen besieging of an enemy's fort etc inscriptions which proliferate in the early medieval period which are particularly numerous in the karnataka attest to all these occasions for valor which were recognized and celebrated in the local record the kogudu hero stone in the belur taluka of the hasan district of the early 11th century gives us an instance of a combination of these reasons of for valor it records the death of makaya the nephew of sivara gavunda in a raid by their village on Tagarinadu in which they encounter Gandhara Duma Kattaya the general of Niti Maharaja a Kadamba chief the raid is described as an act of destruction of the village and assault on mothers and the cattle raid cattle raids are the most prominent mentioned episodes in the inscriptions and are pointed to the importance of cattle rearing and pastoral elements in the economy of the period they are also geographically the most widespread and are frequently indicated on hero stones by depiction of cattle on the lowest panel of the memorial the context of the cattle raid might have been political in some cases as is exemplified by the raid on guduve as found in shimoga district by the kadamba chief santaya deva in retaliation for an attack on the fort but in most cases the context is purely local where the aggressor and cattle thieves are the forest devilers thus inscriptions from betta daku rali of 954 and 964 AD respectively referred to cattle raids by the Vedas while the Chikka Kauti hero stones registered the death of Piriya Attiya Gauk of Kachavikola in defense of cattle that were being driven away by the Vedas in many instances the raiders were from a neighboring settlement thus the Barangi hero stone of 957 AD records a cattle raid by Pebba Gauda of Barangi on Kannasoge Mudanna one of the raiders died in the skirmishes likewise the Nidwani inscription in the Hasan district of 970 AD records a cattle raid on Nidwani by Kencha Gauda of Bedirhaka references to Gaudas engage in cat it references to gaudas engaging in cattle raid outnumber the rest but we do have references to merchants and artisans engaging in them as well a striking instance of a mercantile cattle raid appears in the alatur hero stones of the 9th century which refers to the cattle raid by a group of merchants led by ammana shetty probably in the cholar nadu where they had gone to trade Benjamin Lewis Rice who was the director of public instructions of Mysore and Kurg he has deciphered thousands of hero stones and he got printed the Mysore inscriptions in the year 1879 this translation was printed at the Mysore government press in 1970 
as a gen <coughs> as a general rule an inscription is called a sasana a word derived from the sanskrit word sas which means to command or to pur- proclaim and signifying a royal grant charter or edict a sasana engraved on a stone that is a shila is called a sila shasana while one engraved on a copper or tamra plate is similarly called a tamra sasana a sila sasana is sometimes a counterpart of a tamra sasana the latter being portable and intended for private custody the former to be set up in a public place for general information some portion of the present collection as will be explained further does not consist of sasana properly so called a sila sasana is generally engraved on one side of a large slab of stone lipikallu or sasan kallu erected at the entrance or within the enclosure of a temple or on the outer walls of the edifice sometimes the inscription is on a pillar in front of a temple where the site is favorable inscriptions are also cut on the face of natural rock inscriptions on the ground or on the floor usually record the votive offerings of a private person in return for recovery from sickness or from other favors received a tamra sasana consists of several plates of copper strung together on a stout metal ring the place where it is joined being secured by an impression impression in metal of the royal seal or crest such grants are often kept buried in the earth for security but some of the inscriptions in this collection are not as before stated charters or sasanas in the proper sense of the term they may more accurately be described as epitaphs the monumental stones on which these occur are of two kinds sculptured with figures in relief but most usually without any inscription the first are called the virakal or hero stones being monuments erected in the memory of the warriors slain in a battle they are also in a few places called borukal or war stones and kolukal slaughter stones these trophies are, these trophies are met with in every part of the country sometimes in the middle of open fields sometimes in the heart of lonely forest sometimes singly or in groups by the wayside or in the center of a village to probably mark the scene of hero's last fight the other class of monument called mastikal or maha satikal consists of memorials of sati and denote the spots on which women were burnt along with their husband in obedience to the rules of the sahagamana or the ceremony of going along with their departed lords by emulation on the same funeral pyre a sila sasana or a grant inscribed on a stone slab which are most numerous in india they present the aspect of unbroken expanse of writing surmounted by few sculptured images the inscription is without an integ- interval or gap from top to bottom the engravings being rude and rough or skillful and regular according to the period and the ability of the sculptor the mo- the most ancient inscriptions are in large and deliberately deeper cut letters on massive and ponderous slabs seems as if the work of a giant hands the letters become smaller and more artistic shaped as the period of hosla grants is approached the inscriptions of this time or the 12th and the 13th century are perfect work of art being incised on beautifully polished slabs of black hornblende in regular and ornamental characters varied in design to suit their position and the whole so well arranged and fitted together that no space is left where a single additional letter could be inserted from this time the characters of the engraving deteriorated until the later grants after the fall of the vijayanagara empire the great majority of sila sasana have several sculptured image at top these do not occur in most ancient and the introduction denotes 
the rise of sectarianism the figure in the center represents the donor's chief object of worship if he be a shiva the linga or the symbol of shiva will appear often with a priest officiating if a jaina the figure of a tirthankara and so on for various sects on the other hand of this deity are other figures on one side the animal which is peculiar vahana or the vehicle of the god as bull nandi of shiva kite of garuda for vishnu and so on and on the other hand a cow sulking a, a cow suckling a calf the former representing the land presented the latter the recipient who is enjoying its produce above are symbols of the sun and the moon both as being the two great witness of all the treaties and the human transactions and emblematic of the perpetuity of the gift some stones also show the figure of a royal crest as a bore for the chalukyas a sword for the kalchuris etc in many shivite stones will be noticed a human figure seated in meditation on one side of a linga this is the donor himself modestly represented by anticipation as already enjoying the rewards of his meritorious donation